let's create something magical from this. First, let's go to the Filmic RGB module because that's here already due to the scene referred workflow. And let's go to look and then change the contrast from 1 to 1.1. Now, the whole reason for that is because 1.1 still makes this look good. Anything above it will make it look bad. Right, this image definitely needs some polishing. So for that, I'm going straight to the color balance RGB module. I'm going to activate that one, going to the masks, and then I'm going to click here, contrast gray fulcrum, right? Go back to the master tab. Now this is where the magic happens because we are going to increase some more contrast over here, but we're also going to change the global vibrance, add in the global saturation and change the global brilliance because I want to brighten this image up quite a bit. Now let's go to the local contrast module. Let's activate that one. And I feel we still need some saturation. So let's go back to the color balance RGB module. And I want to add some more saturation into the midtones and into the highlights. And that looks good enough for now. Now, it makes absolutely no sense why I called this video completely ruining your image in Darktable, right? Wrong, because I'm going to change this, what you see right here. It's this. Let's open up GIMP, show you how everything that you need is in the description down below for you to follow along. So let's see you there. So here we have GIMP and we are going to achieve this result and we need quite some layers for that. So the first thing that I wanted to do to this image is remove the background, right? But let's start with duplicating this layer, then making sure that L alpha channel is selected by clicking your right mouse button and then click this add alpha channel. And now we can start to remove the sky. Now there are several ways to do this. You can just delete the sky like this, but what you can do as well, and that's a better option in this case, is just using the magic wand to select the sky. Now, when you have a selection, you see that you will have some edges, right? I suggest going to select and then grow and then put the pixel on two and then click the delete button. Let's deselect this layer. There you go. Now for the final parts, let's go to select none. We need the eraser tool and let's put this on 100%. So the hardness and the force and we can just paint over this and then the sky will be gone, right? Now to sell this effect, we need to work on these windows. So in order for us to save some time, I'm going to decrease the size and I'm going to, let me change the brush real quick. Let me change the size to around three maybe. There we go. And then put the aspect ratio on zero and then just paint over this okay and then once you're done doing that hold control scroll the mouse button towards you to zoom out again and now it's time to add in the layer of the sky right like i said everything can be found down below now to add in a layer go to file and then open and then find it or go to the folder and then just drag and drop it into gimp when you do that you will get a pop-up and that pop-up will say to either convert or to keep. Just click convert and you'll be fine, right? So right now you only see the sky. We don't see our image anymore. And that is because we need to drag this down beneath this layer. Now grab the move tool and then position the sky any way you like, right? So I wanted it to be something like this. So now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this layer. And now we need to work on the colors. The reason why I'm duplicating it is because we've always got an original that we can refer to or look at. And with this top layer selected, we're going to work with the colors. Now I want the tints to match with the tints from the sky. So it needs to be kind of purple, reddish and dark as well, because we don't have a lot of light coming in here. So for that, let's go to the color tab and then we can pick something to work on. So in this case, I'm going to use the color balance one, and that will allow me to change the colors and the shadows, midtones and the highlights. And for the shadows, I'm going to move towards to the reds. And for the midtones, I'm going to move towards the magenta. There we go. Let's click OK. I also want to change the exposure. So let's drop the exposure to make it more dark. Let's increase the black level as well. Let's click OK. And that already matches a lot better. Now let's go back to colors again. And then in this case, let's use the hue saturation one. You can change the hue here. You can change the lightness here to make it even more dark or make it more bright. So let's make it slightly more dark. You can increase the saturation of the colors or decrease them. And I think that looks fine. Now it is a bit different from this image, but just ever slightly, this is a bit more reddish, but you can tweak it any way you like to with the color tab. I like this as well. This will match perfectly with the dragon as well. So now 
the fun part happen. Let's drop in the dragon. And this dragon needs to be scaled. But before you scale it, my suggestion would be to grab this. So this is the paths tool. And then you would have to go around the dragon, right? So make points using your mouse button. You know, create a path around the dragon. Everything that you want to be included into the image. And then just go around every place that you want to. So the wings as well. Make sure you still see the cracks. And I can quickly show you how that looks. So let me grab this image right here. I can go up here to the paths. And there we have the path of the dragon, right? So I created the path of the dragon. And then what's important to know is if you made a point like this, you click the first point holding control. And then you could click enter. And you will see these moving ons. And that's when you have a selection. You go to edit, copy, and then go back to edit, paste as new layer, right? And then once you've done that, this should be some kind of result. Now you can scale it using the scale tool. You can increase the size, decrease the size, whatever you like to, or whatever fits with this image. And then you can move it where you want it to be in the image. So let's say we want it to be up here. But when you look at this, then with the dragon in place, what you can do is right mouse button, and then add layer mask and you can go for white full opacity so you will still see the layer or you can go with black now in this case i would just doing white full opacity and then with that layer selected because it's a white layer you need a black brush so brush black let's soften this and let's change the hardness to i like to use like 10 or 12 same for the softness change the size accordingly obviously and then paint over the edges because that way it will blend in more with the image. So you won't see those harsh lines and it kind of looks less pasted into the image. I already did this. Let me do this as well. So I'm just going to paint over this to make it more smooth and make it blend in more with the environment. Okay. Now. Same goes for here with the nails because you want the nails to be inside of the forest. So you would need to just, you know, paint over this a bit so that they kind of get lost when it comes to details. And then I want the wings to be behind this house. Okay. So for that, let's change the opacity so we can still see the house. And then let's go up here in this layer. So that's the dragon layer. Get the pause tool again. And then let's start here. Go up here. Like so, down, here, here, there we go. And then I can just do this because we're already out of it. Hold control, click that point, click enter, click delete. And now the house is in front of the dragon, select none. And then make sure you change the opacity to 100% again. And that makes it blend in even more because right now the house is in front. The paws are in front of the house. And that looks so much better, right? But we still need some extra here to make it blend in even more because this tool looks a bit too fake. Now, GIMP has all kinds of brushes that you can use. So if you go up here in the menu and you use this one, the vegetation brush, you can actually brush inside the image and make it blend in even more. Now, because you want it to be blended in, you need all kinds of different colors. And we've got some light ones, some dark ones. So... I would suggest go to the color one, click the color picker, click in here. That will select the color and then just create a new layer. And let's call this bush and then drag it on top of the dragon and then just paint those in right to make it blend in even more. Okay. Now at first, this is going to look horrible, but just bear with me and make sure you play around with the force as well. So that it's more visible when needed. There we go. Maybe we should cover this one up as well. And then let's go back to the color one, color picker, grab a different color and then use the brush again, you know, just to make everything blend in. Okay. And then with that layer selected, once you're happy with the result, go to colors. Let's click the exposure. Let's drop that one down as well. And that matches perfectly. Okay. So now you see that it's basically coming out of the background, having his claw inside the forest, right? Now, for some reason, this still looks kind of flat. And that's because we need to add some lighting to the dragon. So let's create a new layer. Let's call this a light. And I like to start with white. So click here. Do it like this. Let's get a brush. Let's make the brush regular again. Bigger size. We need a much bigger size. And then let's change the hardness again. 
uh, 14 and same with the force because the higher you do this the better visible it will be so let's say i put it on 100 percent right and i make one here this is how it looks and that looks absolutely horrible so for that reason i'm going to put it on 14 let's put this on 14 as well because you see that that's very very different okay let's paint behind the dragon here we go let's go to the color selector color picker let's click that color let's make it a bit more reddish we should use that one yeah that's better let's click ok let's slightly add it here and then same down here and now we're going to drag this beneath the dragon right and then if you look at it before and after the dragon stands out much much more you know and then i want to blend in the dragon some more so i'm going to create a new layer let's call this black let's grab the black color and i'm just going to paint over just to make this stand out less because it was really drawing the attention right so now it blends in more so let me show you a before and after so here's the before and here's the after and that's a very creative way to use both so that's why i said i'm ruining or completely ruining an image in dark table i didn't because the dark table version actually looks kind of good you guys know that i like to edit photos as they are as it's you know as real as it gets but this is a nice way how to create something creative or an apocalyptic world or whatever you want to call it. I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys next time. Doei.